And it's time for our first hot topic. I want to take a look at the hiking fees. Schools have resumed. And the, the worries creating for out-of-school children and dropout. Primary and secondary schools have resumed in Nigeria, and many parents are lamenting the hike in fees. Some private schools have increased fees by 300%. Government schools have also seen an increment in fees, all of which have raised fresh concerns of a dropout and increase in the number of out-of-school children. Nigeria already holds the record of the country with the highest number of out-of-school children of primary school age. Frank Elianya, technology and media news editor at Business Day, is my guest for this topic. Good morning to you, Frank. Yeah, good morning. Um, always a pleasure to be on the show. Always a pleasure to have you. Well, Frank, Nigerian house, households are reported to uh, carry 72% of the total education bill in this country, unlike their counterparts in other parts of the world. And uh, most families who put their children in public schools do that because of the fact that, you know, they get to pay lower fees compared to private schools. Now we're having this increase in hikes. What, what's, what, what does this portend? What could this lead to? Uh, it's, uh, it's a very interesting situation. Um, at one point, uh, um, you're looking at uh, um, a situation that could uh, alienate more Nigerians, you know, from the education system. Um, like you rightly point out, uh, pointed out, Nigeria has the highest number of uh, out-of-school children already, and uh, with these hikes that we're looking at, um, more parents could be forced to perhaps withdraw their children and uh, seek, some, uh, seek alternatives um, to uh, educating their children. Uh, uh, but on the flip side also, you could also uh, um, uh, um, see some parents uh, maybe opting for home schools, you know, uh, maybe uh, one of the parents uh, stays home and uh, um, decides to be the teacher at home, you know. So um, th there are different ways, you know, um, people can uh, um, find education that they're looking for. Uh, yeah, but sadly, Nigeria, yeah, Nigeria has not yet uh, given uh, the go-ahead for um, homeschooling. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I was uh, going to allude to. Um, there are different ways, but then um, they, they're not official. And uh, if you're homeschooled, doesn't mean you have a certificate. And uh, we live in a certificate-prone uh, um, environment. Mm. So it, it is. It is. It is actually. What's actually interesting for me is that um, the present administration seem not to have any policy for education. Uh, we've heard um, about. Uh, I think two 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 broadcasts. Uh, from the new president, but none of them has been able to articulate any education policy um, for the country. Um, we've heard him say things around manufacturing. We have heard him say things around uh, creating more jobs, one million jobs, uh, one million digital jobs. Uh, we've heard him say different uh, other things concerning other sectors like uh, mining, you know. But um, education don't seem to be on the priority list, which is very, very worrisome. Uh, and also uh, put a lot of question mark to the reform, reforms that the government has uh, put out, because without an educated population, um, it is very difficult for you to achieve uh, much of uh, the reforms that uh, the the president has been put out. And if you're looking for one million uh, jobs, uh, you need educated people, you know, to, to fit into those roles, you know. But um, right now, what we have seen so far are uh, hikes in uh, school fees, uh, starting with the tertiary education, uh, the universities uh, that also saw hikes. Now we're also seeing that the unity schools, which are federal colleges, uh, have also increased their own school fees. You know, but the question is, what exactly is the plan for education? What exactly is the plan to reduce the number of out-of-school children in our society? And I don't seem to see any direction 
or any plan in that direction. Um, it's, it's, it's over two months now that we've had this government. So it's, uh, um, they celebrated uh, 100 years the other day. You know, for, uh, in that 100 years celebration, there was no um, articulation of uh, any educational achievement. Of course, uh, it's just like there has been a much of uh, achievement in, uh, in other sectors. But education, you would have thought, would be the primary uh, focus of any serious government. If you just need your citizens to be educated for you to move your economy forward, if they're not educated, if, if you're not building human capital, what exactly are you building? Because you need an educated workforce to drive um, a sustainable economy. And if you're not looking into that direction, then I don't know what you're looking at, really. And this situation now that we find ourselves where uh, parents are having to choose whether to go to school with their children or, or send their children to school uh, or leave them at home so that they can uh, reduce the pressure that they're feeling from, uh, from the inflation and the economy or the worsening economy doesn't all go well at all for the economy itself. Okay, the situation is also uh, happening. It's same for the universities. Matter of fact, I think it's even worse in the universities because students are protesting from Unilag to Unijos. And then ASU is inter, you know, saying that government should immediately intervene. However, when you listen to the operators of the schools, both from the primary, secondary, and the universities, they will tell you that they have no choice because they need to run the schools effectively. And because of the prevailing yeah. economic situations, they need to increase the fees. You know, it all goes down again to policy of the I'm, I'm not going to blame uh, the school authorities, you know. Uh, they, uh, they are under pressure right now. Mm -hmm. Oil is high, the cost of oil is high, and of course, diesel is not cheap. You know, so where are they going to get the electricity from? You know, if if there's a if there's a if there's an educational policy, okay, what it does is that it brings together all the factors that will aid the policy to go forward. Um, things like uh, ensuring that uh, there's uh, electricity to all the universities. You know, uh, whether it's going to come uh, at the subsidized. Uh, subsidized rate uh, at a qualified report to ensure that that pressure keeps them. And also, um, that policy will also look at how do you ensure that transportation is cheaper for students, you know? And how, it, uh, it, imagine something like uh, providing big courses for university students for free uh, to take them from their homes to the schools. Imagine uh, uh, things like that, you know, just easing some of those pressures for for parents, you know, so when you now increase, increase, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, the school fees, they are not so, um, they're not so pressured, they, they get to understand you. And I've also said that it's not just about announcing it, it's also to communicate exactly what you want to achieve. Um, it's not about any money, because it looks as if the government just wants to rent seat, which is what they have been doing over the years. So it's, it looks as if they are just trying to tax parents, for tax parents to do what with the money. That's what the parents want to know. Are you using this, um, the new school fees to maybe build more structures? Are you using it to improve the quality of education? Are you using it, what exactly? Are, are you using it to improve or recruit more teachers into the universities? There needs to be an articulation of what the plan is. You don't just make an announcement and assume that everybody should go with it and uh, don't expect a new position and uh, uh, make it and uh, that everybody should understand that this is the important time to do it, it should be paid for. All of those things do, do, not, do not communicate anything. If you want people to, uh, um, to flow with you and because you also know that you're going to put pressure on them, then what you do is you articulate what the vision is and then come with some incentives. There needs to be an incentive that says, okay, so the school fees now at the University of Lagos is 100,000 Naira from, from uh, maybe 40,000 Naira that it was before, you know. Um, but you guys don't need to pay for transport coming to school. And um, if you're coming to school now, there will be uh, maybe one lunch for you when you're in school. 
uh, you know, or there will be that, that, that just has to be something tangible that government gives in return for putting more financial burden on parents. If that, that's where we are right now. But you cannot do that unless you have a vision of this is where we want to take the education system to. So the question again is, where does the government want to go with the education system? I haven't heard that. And then we have a new education minister. What is the person saying? Does the person even have a vision or just camera sticking, uh, taking pictures and uh, um, posing for cameramen and all that? What we need to know is exactly the plan for education in Nigeria. Um, and I think starting with e high was, was a wrong step, really. Uh, um, you should have started with just a more communicate what, what exactly are you going to do. But of course, um, the e high became inevitable because of the um, fuel subsidy announcement. Now, those are also some of the things that um, the, go the, the new president should have looked at while he was announcing um, his uh, subsidy removal to say, we are, we are removing subsidy, but we are channeling the money into this. We are channeling money into education. We are channeling the money into this and this and this. Articulate them. Articulate them. But that was not done. It was just a matter of we have to move this because people are still in the money. We want to be able to account for the revenue, blah, 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 blah. blah. I think you haven't said anything that people can hold on to. So when you um, bring out these these um, uh, uh, policies that looks like you're whipping people, um, making them cry more than they've already been crying, then uh, uh, um, X comes along with it. Indeed, Frank. Indeed, Frank. Uh, with what is happening, if nothing is done to bring down the, this, uh, in, this hacks that these fees that have been increased, one begins to wonder and fear for the future of education in the country. These uh, tuition fees are also rising faster than the wages of parents, the wages and their incomes. That too, and also the wages of the teachers. I, I, I think that's the other side that we should also look at. Um, teachers in those private schools that are also hiking their fees are not earning higher than what they used to earn before. I read, read the report and uh, I saw where one of the teachers said that she earns 35,000 naira. That's that, uh, um, that payment has not been increased, that salary has not been increased. So what, is, what you're going to find is that many of them are, who have to migrate or go look for another job because um, they are feeling more pressured, okay, and they are not earning um, enough to take home. They're not, they're not earning enough to take home, and um, they are seeing that their schools are also in, um, increasing fees, but these money are not translated to their own welfare because. When you increase fees, what naturally comes along with it is that there's, uh, there's a lot more work you, because you want to make parents um, happy um, or to keep them coming. So you naturally want to add a lot more other things to say, okay, this is why we are increasing fees so that uh, we, we, we can also provide you with some of these services. But the teachers who are supposed to be the champions of those services are not earning um, higher than what they used to earn when the inflation was lower. So if you're not going to bring in more responsibilities to them, then they have to leave. So what we're going to find is that it is a depletion of the manpower in some of those schools. Because the responsibility has increased, but because money has also been increased. And the, the salary has not um, increased alongside with all those responsibilities. So we are now going to experience um, dropping manpower and, uh, and of course, from what we have said, uh, said before, um, um, parents look at it and, and say, does it make sense for me to pay this amount of money, but I'm not getting the, the quality service that I need to get? Because uh, 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 because if I'm going to increase from, uh, say, 187,000 naira to 300,000 naira, I would expect that the teacher that is now teaching my son or my daughter is a lot more qualified than the one that was teaching him when he was 187,000 there. I mean, you're charging me for that. So I expect a lot more from there. So if I look and I come back again and it's the same person 
or you have repeated another word that doesn't even look like a, the, the last person. You know, so I'm going to have to ask myself, why exactly am I continuing this charade of, uh, of, of being a higher school fee? Why getting less for what I'm paying for? So I will put my child and then look for somewhere else to put my child. So that's what we're, we're looking at the potential unemployment, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we are also looking at the potential of uh, schools, some schools closing down because um, the population would not be enough to sustain the running of those schools. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're looking at. It is it's a very bad situation. But I I said before it can only be uh, be um, be addressed by a, a well articulated government policy that doesn't just look at public education but also look look at the private institutions as well. How can we help them? How can we help them go through this time that we have put them to? I, I will always say it is the first. It is the it is the government is to be blamed for what has become the Nigerian economy today. Yeah, I, we are also looking at Frank. We are also looking at uh, public schools that are already um, struggling, being overstretched because. Most parents or many parents will be withdrawing their children from the private schools. Just as you have said, some of these private schools may end up closing down because they wouldn't have enough uh, pupils to teach. So the public schools are also going to be overstretched as they take in more sure. pupils. True. And just to add to that would be that already the quality in the public schools are not uh, um, as high as it should be. Um, we all listen to our parents tell us how uh, education in, in during their times were very, very high. You know, uh, even though sometimes they over exaggerate those uh, stories. But uh, uh, look at the diminishing quality in the public schools, and then coupled with an increasing number of uh, students um, that are being matched to um, low, low, um, low number of uh, teachers. You know what that is going to uh, uh, mm -hmm. become. So that's what we're looking at right now. The quality dropping much more. And then, of course, uh, um, the, the, the facilities not being able to contain um, as many people that, are, that, that they are going to um, recruit. Uh, um, the question then becomes again, what are the state, states themselves are also doing? But this also looks like an, 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 an advantage or, or an opportunity for them to maybe try to look at the education system to upgrade them so that they can also attract some of these people that are going to be leaving the private schools. But um, you can only take your child to a school that you know that um, that when they go there, they will be packed up um, and, and not where, and not like you're taking them from um, right fire to fire. You know, so they, that's what um, parents are, are looking at. But then, of course, you're also going to see some parents say, what, what, why should I put bother with any school here in Nigeria? Why don't I just take them to maybe neighboring countries like Ghana, maybe um, uh, the Federal Republic or Togo, you know, where uh, um, so, some semblance of quality education can be obtained. And those who also have the money will say, um, you know what, I've, I've had enough with Nigeria and Africa, and then they will take their children outside Africa, of course, that 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 will be brain drain, all right. And uh, um, but even but even those ones, say, but even those yeah, ones are having, but even those ones, Frank, are having huge challenges because some of them are struggling to find dollar to pay for the school fees of their children. Those whose children are already schooling outside of Africa, so that may not be an yeah. option that some parents may want to take at this point in time, when they see the stress that some parents are going through to get enough dollars to pay for school fees? You know, you're correct, yeah. But, you know, um, desperate times, you know, can call for desperate names. Yeah. People can look at it and say, um, uh, um, it's, it, uh, it's like I'm burning the bridge. Which, um, this is the last straw. And um, maybe just take everybody out of the country, you know, or um, like I said, you can go to other African countries like Ghana, you can mm. go to Togo, you know, um, you don't necessarily need to go to London or UK um, to put your children, you know, and whether you're finding um, 
In Ghana, you probably would not need it all, it has a lot of efforts to do transactions there. You go there, you do CDs and uh, uh, um, <laughs> pay for your school fees, you know. So, but it, it's, it, it's a choice people are, are going to make right now, and it is not going to be to the advantage of our education system. And it, it, it will only take a visionary government to, to stem the tide. And I don't see that happening yet. I, I don't have faith that it's going to happen, you know, because um, if, if, if the president has already given two broadcasts that none of them has, has anything to do with what he's going to do about education, um, then um, I, I think it's, a, it's almost like a hopeless situation. But um, what we are also going to find is that um, we probably might also find some innovative people who come up with some business ideas around education to say, uh, can we school from home? You know, have uh, online online schools. Um, we already had one one uh, online university that was registered, I think, uh, earlier this year. All right, so we probably might have more schools that will say, uh, you know what, um, come, let's register your child online. But then, of course, um, the challenge will be the internet, mm. um, the penetration, the broadband penetration um, has to match up with it. And then, of course, you also have issues around attention span. Um, a lot of distraction from online. I, I remember during the COVID period when, when uh, our children were asked to study online. Um, I don't think much was achieved from that because a lot of uh, um, children abandoned classes and uh, were watching something else on, online. It became uh, a chaotic situation for some parents because they couldn't monitor again what their children were uh, doing at home. While they were on. Exactly. Oh, well. So it, <laughs> Yes, time will not. That we, yeah, you, bottom line, parents are under stress right now. A lot of stress. True. And the government needs to do something. Needs they to do need something to urgently. Them. Urgently at that. Thank you so much, Frank Eliana. Thank you. Frank Eliana, technology and media news editor at Business Day, has been my guest on the first hot topic. We'll be back for the second hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>